Many times when we go to install a new aftermarket speaker into a vehicle, we're going to need a speaker adapter. Speaker adapters are needed because speakers have slight variations in size from manufacturer to manufacturer and because every vehicle is different. Now there are times that you can find an aftermarket plastic speaker adapter to install, but many times there might not be one that's available for the particular speaker size that you want to use in the vehicle that you're installing into. Additionally, many times pre-made speaker adapters are made of a thin plastic. So how can we custom make our own speaker adapters out of a thicker, more robust material that will fit perfectly in our application? That, my friends, is coming up. What's up, my Fabrication family? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. And if you're new here on this channel, I have review videos, I have tutorial videos, and I have build videos just like this one. So if you're new, I hope that you consider smashing that subscribe button. So right now I'm working on doing a full car audio install into a Jeep, and I'm going to actually need to make some custom speaker adapters for the rear sound bar. Let's jump right into it. To get started with making these adapters, I'm first going to trace the factory grill onto a piece of wood and I'm using a long nose pattern marker. Next up I'm going to rough cut the wood and I'm using a jigsaw to do so saving about an eighth of an inch off the edge of the line. Now since I'm going to be copying the profile of the factory grill to this piece of wood I need to stick the two together and normal template tape won't work because there's not enough of a surface area so I'm just using screws. Once this is done over at the router I load up a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit. I'm going to be using this to actually copy the profile. The bearings of this router bit will ride against the profile of the speaker grill and copy that profile to the wooden piece below. Now it's time to fire up the router and copy this shape. Now while I'm doing this, I want to take a quick second to thank my Patreon support team for helping support this video. Their support helps make these videos possible. I'm currently trying to reach a new goal on Patreon that will help me be able to upload six videos per month. So if you'd like to help me reach that goal and join the team along with getting access to some extra behind the scenes videos, check out patreon.com slash car audio fabrication or use the link down in the video description. So now I have my factory grill completely copied to a piece of wood. I wanted to do a quick check just to make sure that my new template will actually fit on the sound bar and sure enough it does. Here I'm drawing a quick line just so I can remember the orientation of the adapter once it's in the pod. Next I need to find the exact center point of my new wooden template. And to do so, I'm going to use this cool tool from my show sponsor, Mobile Solutions, called the Cross Arc. This tool has pins that allow me to draw a line that's 90 degrees from the edge of the circle. And by doing so, if I draw two of these lines, the point where they cross is the exact center of a circle. I'm going to be using this circle template to ultimately make the hole, so those lines also allow me to use the alignment lines to draw a circle. Now I can also take my new grill from my new set of Rockford Fosgate speakers and set it on top of my wooden template and use it to transfer the holes that will be used for the bolt locations of the speaker. A quick side note, the reason that I'm doing all of this on the piece of wood rather than on the final adapters themselves is by doing this I only have to do it once and then I can transfer it to multiple different pieces of plastic that I'll ultimately use for the adapter. With my layout complete, I'm going to drill a couple of starter holes and then I'm going to use a jigsaw in order to rough cut this material away. Now I can take my circle template from earlier and I'm going to apply multiple different pieces of template tape. All of the different tools and materials that I'm using throughout this video can always be found down in the video description. Once I remove all the backing paper, I then stick the template into position. Once again, it's time to fire up the router and again I'm using a flush trim bit, but if you're looking closely you may notice that I'm actually using an oversized bearing on the flush trim bit. I'm doing this so that I can slightly reduce the inside diameter and it will fit the speaker perfectly. Let's double check it. Oh yeah, boom shakalaka. A quick double check on the sound bar as well and we're looking good. Let's transfer this stuff to ABS. For transferring the shape to my ABS, I like to use a silver sharpie because the line shows up a lot better yeah, at least it does when the Sharpie's new. In this case, my Sharpie's getting kind of old. I need to get a new one, but you guys get the idea. Now it's once again time to, you guessed it, rough cut the piece. And a key secret to making sure that you can cut ABS really effectively is having the right blade. A link to the blade that I find works really well is down below. Now that the piece is cut out, it's once again time for the template tape treatment. 
So I'm gonna apply some template tape, remove the backing paper, and then stick it in position. At the router, I'm using the quarter inch spiral flush trim bit in order to copy the wooden template, and I find that the spiral flush trim bit works really well for this for a couple of reasons. First of all, the cutting flute of the router bit is always in contact with the plastic, so it has a smoother cut. Also, the router bit is always pulling the chips down into the cabinet underneath, so it just keeps the workpiece tight against the table. Once I'm done flush trimming this side, I go ahead and drill the mounting holes into that first layer. Next, I take this assembly and stick it to another piece of freshly cut ABS. After I flush trim it as well, I now have this sandwich of parts and I can then transfer the hole that I just drilled into the new piece. Now I want to keep this assembly stuck together because I'm going to be applying a chamfer and this allows me to maximize the depth of the cut because I can have the bearing ride against the wood. This chamfered edge will give the finished speaker adapter a much more finished look. I can now check the fitment of the new adapter and everything looks good. Now before I actually mount the adapters, I want to make sure that I get a nice seal against the sound bar. In order to do this, I'm using the speaker gasketing tape. This will help to seal the adapter and it will also prevent the sound bar from vibrating against the adapter. With that step complete, I can now mount the speaker adapters using the stock hardware. Next, I place the speaker in position and then I use a punch in order to mark the location of the mounting holes. I can then drill and tap the ABS so that I have a nice threaded location to use hardware to mount the speaker. And there we have it, our finished speaker adapters with our finished speaker install into the sound bar. If you haven't seen the other videos for this build, make sure that you go back and check out the videos where I show the whole wiring process for this system, and I show how I sound treated the soundbar in order to improve bass performance. If you're new here, I hope that you consider subscribing because I'm going to be working on making an amp rack beauty panel for the amplifiers, and I'm going to be making a custom subwoofer box. A special thanks goes out to Jose, Eddie, Brian, Ali, Corey, Pedro, Finchie, EJ, Emmanuel, Rory, Truman, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon support team. These guys helped me out a ton to make these videos, so if you're interested in joining the support team, be sure to check that out down below. Thank you again, everyone, for watching.